What we're going to be doing here today is determining the feasibility of using a manometer as a feedback loop sensor to control the fuel input or this auger on this charcoal gasification device I'm building. Um, initially, I attempted to use this sight glass setup here with a tandem LDR circuit that would activate the auger as soon as light no longer passed through the sight glass we're seeing there. But there were a lot of problems associated with that approach. Um, most importantly, the particle size of the fuel determines the optimal fuel light or fuel height level. So if we have very large chunky particles of fuel in our combustion chamber, we could have it packed all the way up to here without any serious restriction of flow. But if we have a lot of fine powdery grains, then we may only be able to run this high without completely clogging the system. Which brings me to another subject. Downdraft gasifiers are out. I'm, I'm done after this experiment because I've just determined that a downdraft gasifier compacts the charcoal bed and restricts flow, whereas an updraft loosens the particles, blows ash out a little bit better, and doesn't clog itself up. Okay, so I got a watt meter rigged up to the blower here. There is no fuel in the hopper yet, but I am going to run the auger for three seconds. Three seconds is typically what provides 30 milliliters of fuel in the combustion chamber. At that point, we are going to document the current position of the manometer and then we are going to fire it up on full power. And I want to see how high the water level rises in this graduated cylinder on full power with 30 milliliters of fuel. And we'll go from there. Okay, let's get this show on the road. I'm going to give this a three second shot. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. That should have charged the combustion chamber with 30 milliliters of fuel. We're about right here somewhere. I'm going to fire the, the blower on full power. We're going to pay attention to the watts and most importantly, the manometer. Here we go. It's gonna come spraying out of the top all over me. It's kind of undulating around there. It's probably moving particles around. It started off at 30. So we're almost at what is that? Eight? About 146 watts. I probably should have put some type of uh, check valve stop on that. So, we do have the power to blow the water completely out of there. I think what I need to do is put some type of pressure differential tube on this thing. Or something. So at least we did get some readings. I'm thinking what maybe had happened is that the vibrations cause the particles to settle more and more eventually clogging up the combustion chamber our fuel level has not approached that height at least I wasn't getting hardly any airflow out of there as I said so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off this grate we're going to dump the fuel out and we're going to determine if we in fact had 30 milliliters of fuel in this chamber so, despite the disaster, I am very pleased to see that we actually got quite a usable reading. A little bit too usable. I'm going to have to stop and think about how I can connect this to where it won't do that. Maybe if we put a leak 
and this line right here, a small pinhole, something that won't allow it to achieve the total pressure. Because that thing blasted quite a bit out of there. I'm thinking, yeah, about 14 milliliters of fluid just got sprayed out all over the floor. So, maybe um, I had too much in there to begin with. Let's fire it back up. Why not? Whoa. Okay, something's going on. I'm getting like no airflow. Let's try. Okay. So there is a limit to which a uh, manometer can work before it just goes into overflow and starts blowing air through there. Yeah, once it breaks free, it won't stop. I'm gonna have to figure something out there. Maybe um, if I make the intake line a little smaller, maybe it just has too much flow capacity. Tell you what, let me pinch the line here and we'll see if that works. freeze on me for now I'm going to uh, dump the fuel out we'll see what's in there we're gonna end this experiment and we'll have to think a little bit about what we're gonna do about this overflow issue okay here's my proposed fix to that problem I think this might be the solution to give us a higher column, inducing a higher pressure that might be beyond the limits of the particular air system setup that I've got here. Um, unfortunately for this particular design, this tube has already taught me something. It's, it's enlightened me to the fact that if I keep going with this particular test and design, I'm only doing it because of cognitive dissonance and I don't wanna do that. Basically, the lack of airflow through this device is being caused for two reasons. Vibration is settling the fuel bed, compacting it, making it far more restrictive to airflow. And second, the airflow is also making that happen. So, this thing's pretty much done as far as the downdraft configuration. We're going back to updraft. So just for the sake of observation of a manometer, I am gonna go ahead and try it again with the coil and see if the coil does at least solve the problem because I'm gonna be using the manometer later on anyway. We might as well go ahead and use this setup to kind of learn how to use them without spraying it all over the place. Okay, so in conclusion, this copper coil did in fact solve the problem. I can now turn this thing on full throttle and place my hand over the discharge and the manometer will not overflow. So here we go. Fire it up. And that's without my hand over it or anything.
drops big time. So maybe I just need to move this. But so far that seems to have solved the problem. We're starting off at about 33, 35 or so. That's with absolutely no restriction. Even like that, there's still not a whole lot of air coming out of this thing. My hand is over it. seems to have solved the problem with the, the overflow. You could probably add a bigger coil and get an even better response. So I guess the most important feature of this video has turned into the idea of using a fluid coil or fluid reservoir at the bottom of a manometer to keep it from overflowing. Now what this coil essentially does is provides more fluid at the bottom of the device to achieve a taller fluid column. Now with a taller fluid column, it takes a higher pressure for the pump to actuate. Now we don't necessarily want to start off with the tall fluid column. I could make this coil longer, like say a 12 inch coil at this size helix and start the fluid off way down here so we'd have a very low pressure and we could get an extremely broad operation range. So altering the size of this coil alters the operation range of the fluid column. Now I could make the manometer taller and the, the pump would no longer be able to overcome it but then it would require a lot of pressure to move it just even a little bit so on low settings we would get no behavior by implementing this copper coil reservoir at the bottom we can get a much broader spectrum of operation because we can have a lower pressure column to start with and still have enough fluid down here to give us a very tall column. 